Hello and welcome back to Beacon Light. I did record this one a week or two ago, but I'm having to re-record it for reasons. Um, so here we are. And before we start, I would like to mention, so last time I said I'd released Character Prompt Generator, and this time I can tell you that I actually have two new generators out. One is for magic items, including everyday items such as books, coins, or um, miscellaneous objects, and the other one is specifically for arcane instruments in Blades in the Dark. They're quite fun, check them out, enjoy. But this time in Beacon Light, the actual purpose of this channel, we're going to look again at a coloured scene, and this time we're talking a bit about cinematography and about colour choice. Um, so the inspiration for this was Godzilla 2014, and that is a terrible, nauseatingly straight film, but I do love some of the visuals. Um, I went absolutely feral for the flare sequence on the big screen, although that did kind of disappoint in DVD. King of the Monsters, I have also now seen. That was okay. I liked it better than um, the original. But there's something very magnificent about the way that film uses haze and distance and scale in some shots. And I thought, well, I've got stuff in my back catalogue of games that I could draw like that. So this picture is one of the most sort of ruthless, out of control things that my character Ezeki ever did. And that was in an effort to protect refugees from the zombies that were coming for them, Ezeki unleashed fire that was so hot it melted the sand into glass and that trapped the zombies within it. And some of them possibly weren't actually dead. But one thing to note about this image is that I was a little bit lazy. So ideally, I should have actually detailed um, these zombies out rather than just silhouetting them. But, because this one in the middle here, this one in particular, is kind of the focal point if you look at the areas of light and darkness. But I was just kind of coming out of a creative drought at the time, and my motto with personal work is very much better done than perfect. I learned a lot from this piece, and that is what's important. I quite like this piece, that is also important. So before I outline the elements that make up this picture, I'll also point out where the camera is. So it's down among the zombies, surrounded by them, looking up over their heads to the hazy form of Ezeki, and that's this enormous ass bird here, um, who is materialising out of the smoke. Knowing where your camera is, is important for perspective, for blocking, for composition. And it matters the most for scenes, especially ones that are meant to look cinematic like this one, and comics. And I'm just going to make a quick mental note to do a whole episode on camera placement sometime, but I won't go into it too detailed now. The four elements that go into this picture are, and I'm going to move over to the actual file here, we have the zombies, and those take up the bottom third as well as rising up around the sides. Um, it's the fire effect here, and as well as the smoke, it is the sun effect, and of course the final element is the smoke, the clouds, and Ezeki himself. That last point is all one element, it's all on one layer, we can see that here. And that does ha constrain how I can work on and how I can edit this piece. It's not bad that I've done it all on one layer. I've produced some great work that's all been on one layer. But it is noticeable because, well, I mean, look at the colours if I take all of these filters off. These are the base colours that I was working in. They couldn't really be edited on the layer, so I had to use a bunch of filters. When I did it, I used my favourite little trick of um, building up part of the painting, copying the layer, and then continuing it on the next. So we'll look at how I did that. First, I've got this baseline fiery gradient here, um, with the fire below. So here, the fire is reflecting off the clouds and the smoke and the haze above, and that means that the brightest area is here at the bottom. Then I adjust that by making it be clouds. So this is using one of the um, default Clip Studio Paint brush tools. I believe it would have been the Thin Gouache because that is my favourite. Um, so I've got the clouds in here. And then after this, I add Ezeki. Now, this isn't a great picture of the bird. I couldn't find the right angle for a reference image, basically, which is why what we're about to see happened. Because finally, on the layer that made it in, 
I blend Ezeki in with the background. I get I get them to be part of the smoke and the haze of the background. I imply the blast of power off their wings. A note here with the wings that I've picked a shade that is slightly too dark. It's slightly too warm for the general sort of gist of the smoke. It looks a bit dissonant. And part of that is this is a picture that doesn't really use black, um, which is quite unusual for me. But I did use black to create that bit of smoke. The point, the reason why I was trying not to use black and why it was a problem when I did was because this is a situation that's suffused with haze. And haze, whether from smoke or fog or smog or steam or any other source, it disperses light. It reduces the contrast between different visual elements. And unless it's really thick, dark, close smoke, it is going to reflect light. It's going to lighten the scene. And this is reflected elsewhere in the picture. So with the zombies here, instead of silhouetting them in black, which is how I usually do with, with silhouette work, I've color picked it from the smoke and then I've made the value a bit darker um, and so on. So if you look, I can color pick out of the smoke and get this color and then I color pick out of the zombies and get that color. So they're very, very much in the same ballpark on the um, color wheel. Now I'll just do a quick detour into what the terms that I'm using here is. So value is the darkness of the color. So if I click here, that's quite a light value and um, that's up here. Whereas if I click down here, that's a much darker value. And then saturation is how um, bright the color is. So again, this is much less saturated than this. And then hue is where we are on this color wheel, basically. So we're all really in the same sort of zone of oranges and reds. It's quite a narrow hue, hue range in this image. So going back to the zombies, originally they were on several different layers so that I could paint in these gradients. And those are dark where they're silhouetted against the lower sky and then lighter up at the bottom where the fire spreading through the ground is reflected up on them. The ones nearest to us are the darkest, so down here, whereas the ones furthest away are slightly lighter. After I merged the layers, and by the way, that was a really silly thing to do, as you'll understand why in a minute, I um, then blurred the closer ones, which did make it quite difficult. You can see that I've got some slight issues with the blurring where they touch. Um, but the reason for this blurring is because the camera is not focusing on the zombies. It's focused further away where the big ass bird is. The big ass bird is not technically the focal point of the image because of the contrast difference, um, which is a slight fault in it. But it is looming, it is imposing, and that little detail of the burning eye kind of cements it as being the important element. I'm going to skip through how I did the fire. It's exactly the same as how I normally draw fire. Smoke and fire tools, glow layer, bit of, bit of extra. And I'm just going to mention the sun. So the sun here is a vital part of the general vibe of the picture. Um, it forms a compositional line between the tallest zombie and Ezeki's eye. And it is made of two layers. Both of them are glow dodge. One is a light gold circle that is blurred a little bit, and the other is a larger circle that is blurred a lot. And above it, we have this layer here, which is a copy of the original clouds layer, and that's had its brightness co converted into opacity via a really convoluted process that I don't have time to delve into now. But it does, what it does is that it just faintly makes the sun be a bit blotted out by the haze. So this is the basic setup that I have in this image, but it is pretty lackluster for now, and that's why I've got so very many adjustment layers. Sometimes I manage to pick out the right colors immediately. Usually I don't get it quite so far off as this, but I do usually like to have at least one adjustment layer just to put it, push it a bit. So in this instance, I've got a tone curve layer that comes over the whole background, mostly over Ezeki, 
and what that does is it makes Ezeki stand out more and it makes the clouds darker. It also evens out this slight area where I've got a slight issue with how dark the clouds are. Then I have another one that is clipped to the zombie layer, which then um, darkens them to fit with the background. Now you'll know you might be asking why didn't I just use one tone curve layer for both? Well, the answer to that is because they're different opacities. This one needed to be very much um, quite a strong tone curve. This one only needed to be a fifty percent opacity, so it's got fifty percent less effect than the tone curve going over the background. After that, I have a sand texture la layer, and that adds visual um, interest. And then I've got a sunset gold gradient map layer, which lightens the image so that it's actually possible to see what is going on. And it also gives the sun a bit of much needed pop, because with that um, adjustment layer or with the clouds to make it hazy, the sun kind of had lost its oomph. And thus we have it. The colours are consonant, the camera is looking at the big ass bird, the zombies are a bit hit and miss, but they do get the point across. And that is what art is, really. It is getting the point across. So thank you for listening. Um, as always, if you like my work, if you like what I do, please do engage with the YouTube channel, or come check me out on any of my social media platforms. You can find all details about me on kesbeacon.card.co. Um, thank you for listening, and I hope all of your works are coming out great, and that if you have any kind of creative block, as I have had recently, it gets sorted quickly. Farewell.